So this time we're going to do tables. Uh, it's amazing that we've managed to get seven videos into a Lua tutorial without doing tables, but we did. Um, so I've taken the liberty of just making this uh, little bit of a Lua program, create this state, I've executed the Lua file and I've closed it, and my Lua program doesn't have anything in yet. I've also added an include for a cert because I'm going to use that just to test some stuff as we go. So first thing I want to do is just this is my script file here, this this empty space. So this would be my script file that I would have loaded from disk or something. But I'm just going to create a table in script. So this isn't a scripting tutorial, um, but basically that is an empty empty table in Lua script called X. And remember, X is a global. And I'm just going to put a couple of uh, dummy values in here. So I'm going to say uh, Dave is busy. <coughs> and Ian is idle. So yeah, it's just a just a simple Lua table with a couple of string values in there that are keyed by strings. So that's kind of like your, if you know Python, that's like a Python dictionary. So I'm using it like that in this case. Um, so now what I want to do, after I've executed the, or done the uh, Lua file, uh, I just want to like look at these values that we've got in the Lua script as they are right now. So first thing I need to do there is I need to get a global because that table is a global. And uh, the global is called X. So this pushes the table, the global value X onto the Lua stack. Um, and let's just assert that this is a table because just like we had is number and is is user data we've also got is table so it's the last value we pushed on the stack which is minus one so i'll just run that for now and let's just see that we got our table so nothing happened but no assert so that's all working i'm just gonna uh take that out for now so We've got our global table on the stack, but what we really wanted to do is we wanted to get some values out of the table. We, we didn't really just want the table itself. So first thing we need to do is we need to push on one of the keys for the for the values that we're interested in. So my key here is called Dave. So I'm going to push a string on. Um, and no surprises for guessing that we've not used push string yet. And we've not used strings at all, really. Um, but if you want to push a string onto the stack, you use Lua push string. So I'm going to push a string called Dave. So I, I'm, what I'm doing is I am pushing on the key um, for that I want to access in the table. So I, I need the value of Dave, so I'm pushing on the key Dave. So I've now got the table on the stack and I've got the key on that I'm interested in. And to get the value out of the table, I use get table. So this might look like get table gets you a table, but it doesn't it actually gets you a value out of a table. And this is also one of the cases where you you need to be aware of like you need to look in the user reference manual, the Lua reference manual, to find out exactly what this function is expecting because you can see here it only takes one parameter which is an index, but it does quite a bit more than that. So it wants the index of the table that it's going to work with. So at the moment, we've got at minus one at the top of the stack, we've got our key Dave, and at minus two, we've got our table X. So it wants minus two as the index. But what that actually did was it took the key Dave, it popped it off the stack, and then it looked in the table X, and it pushed on the value that it found uh, for the key Dave onto the stack. So it popped the key and it pushed the value. And I think it left the uh, it left the global table X on the stack. So we can just do a quick assert there to find out if if that's really what we think might be happening. I mean, this might not tell us the greatest thing in the world, but we think the last thing on the stack should be a string because busy is a string, uh, This this here. We're looking for this value to have been pushed on the stack, and we're expecting busy. So let's just compile that, and there's no certs. So hopefully that is fine, but I'll just take this assert out for now. 
So let's just have a look at the at the value that it pushed onto the stack. So we can do that with lua to string, just like we used to number. Again, we haven't used this function before, but but we did to string, we did to user data, and unsurprisingly for strings, it's to string. And we're looking for the last value on the stack, which is at minus one. And this actually returns a C pointer to a string. So a const char and it's whatever it was whatever Dave is. So so Dave is oops, can't spell today. So it's returning me a C pointer. Um, and then we can just print that out and have a look at it and see if it's the value that we think it is. So I cannot spell is today. So I'm expecting that to say Dave is busy. So let's have a look at that. There we go. Dave is busy. So we successfully pulled that value out of the table and we had a look at it and it was fine. Now, this isn't something we had a problem with, with numbers, but uh, when you get a string out of Lua, it is a pointer to a string. It's not a string, it's a pointer to a string. And strings in Lua are subject to garbage collection. So something to be aware of here, if you've never used it before, is that if this string, or the, the, the string that this is pointing at, is garbage collected at any point, then your pointer becomes garbage. So you have to be careful what you do with this pointer. If you want to pass this about to people, you've got to be really, really sure that Lua isn't going to garbage collect the string that you're looking at. And in our case, it could do that very easily. And in fact, it will do it at this point when you close this um, Lua state here. Um, that string will be garbage collected and we can probably check that by just after we've closed. Let's just see if we can still print out that string and we should find that well, it's it's printed out garbage. So it didn't crash, but we we definitely had um, a, a dangling pointer there. So just keep in mind that this program is really trivial that I'm writing here. But if you want to um, pass these pointers about to other people, the strings you should really copy them first, or be really really sure that they're not going to go out of scope. Um, and also keep in mind that's the same is true for user data that we did last time. A user data is just a pointer to a piece of memory that is managed by Lua and Lua can clean that up at any point that it chooses if it thinks the thing has gone out of scope and it will do that. So um, that's not too bad. It's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit wordy, but um, Lua does have a little bit of syntax to help with this particular case. So even though we left the global x on the stack. I believe this function left it there. I'm just going to push it on again anyway, just to make life slightly simpler. So I've pushed on the, I've got the global x, which is our table, and uh, Lua has something called get field. So this is just going to be synt um, syntactic sugar for what we did before. Uh, it wants the uh, get field, wants the table, the index of the table, which is now at minus one. And it wants the key for the value that you're looking at. So this time, let's look at Ian. So this is kind of almost the same thing we did before. We had three lines of code to do it there, but now we've got two. Uh, so it's slightly simpler, uh, and it does the same thing. This fu function, it just it just pushes the the value for the key you were looking at onto the stack, and we can do the same thing. And let's just take a look at what that value was. So we're expecting to string to give us the we're expecting it to give us the string idle because Ian has been set to idle and remember we're just doing the syntactic equivalent of this or well, it's syntactic sugar for that so same thing really let's just see if that works so there you go so Ian is idle so that's pretty good but what about if we wanted to push a new value into this table, and we can do that. Well, let's get the t that, get the table again. It's a global. Remember, I'm 
again the table is still on the stack there but I'm just just to make this slightly simpler I'm just going to push it on again anyway because I can um, and we can do that with Lua set field instead of get field so it wants the Lua state and it wants the index of the table actually I've done that slightly wrong uh, the first thing I need to I need to push on the the table which I'm interested in then I need to push on the value that I want to push into that table so in this case uh, I'm going to use push string again have we used push string before yeah we used it up there uh, I'm going to push the string uh, so this is going to be the value that we want to push into the stack so I'm going to say sleeping so that's the table we're working with, that's the value we want to put in the table and this is going to set the field uh, we want the index of the table so sleeping is at, is at the top of the stack, that's minus 1 and the table is at minus 2 so minus 2 is the table we're interested in working with and k is the key um, and in this case let's set John to be sleeping John is definitely asleep so this is kind of the opposite of the get field that we did up here except instead of reading a value we are going to push the value sleeping onto the key John in the table X and hopefully that compiles but we don't know if that's really worked so let's just copy the code we did down there and let's just pull the value for John out again and make sure that we did that correctly so we want to get the field John we want to say John is John and let's just take a look at that so John is supposed to be sleeping John is sleeping there we go so that's pretty good keep in mind that the value that we've pushed on the, the John value could now be seen later on by that script in other functions or whatever so that that table has now changed and we've changed it in C rather than changing it in script so this is uh, doesn't seem that much use at the moment um, although tables are such a big part of, of Lua that we couldn't move on any further without learning them basically so we've learned how to get a table get the value out of a table and put a value into a table we need to do that because we really what we want to do is go back and refactor our create sprite and move sprite that we did before we want to make this syntax slightly nicer but we can't do that without tables so we've learned how to use tables but unfortunately that's not enough we need to learn how to use meta tables as well and once we've learned tables and meta tables uh, then we can go back and refactor our sprite and our user data code and we can make that uh, syntax slightly nice and we can do more stuff than we did before and we can also solve some problems that we may not have noticed that that we had at this point uh, with this code that we made so we'll get around to that eventually but tables finally it's not a Lua video until you've learnt tables <laughs>